Hi, and thanks for joining Researcher at Cold Case 11. Now, this video is about Claudia Lawrence, the 35 year old lady who went missing from her home in York in March 2009. And the title of this video is The Devil's Advocate. And the people who were connected to Claudia in and around her life at that time, in 2008, 2009 will be logged as characters in this clip. Character 1. Now this person was once in a relationship with Claudia Lawrence, but they eventually moved in with Claudia's best friend. Into an house just opposite on the same street. As devil's advocate, I'd have thought this should have been a red flag for Claudia's friendship with her friend, her said mate of hers. Character 2. Now this were a best friend of Claudia, who for some strange reason had moved opposite Claudia's house taking Claudia's boyfriend with her. And to recap on character two, this close mate of Claudia, she'd been housed by Claudia months before Claudia vanished, for reasons unknown. And as devil's advocate, could it be to gain inside knowledge of sorts? Now this character also spoke on at least two occasions about a friend in the past tense. The panic that this caused were reflected by her eyes peeling. And character two also said some really odd statements since Claudia vanished. She said that married men in the nags head were worried. And this is around the time the press were being warned off the case. But as devil's advocate, I feel it were a senseless statement to make if these married men were innocent, wouldn't you say? And another strange thing, this character said, I hope she died before she hit the ground. Now that reminds us of the vest that was handed in. Okay, and the second and final odd statement well when she said and I think the oddest statement to make is when character 2 said I thought shit this ain't the way that I wanted it to go which makes me think is it a rehearsal how did you want it to go? It sounds rather rehearsed, like something naturally didn't go the way it should have gone. Character three. Now character three was also a very close friend of Claudia, who in earlier interviews with the media also spoke of Claudia, her best friend, in the past tense on at least two occasions. And this character also had Claudia's dad's phone number, Peter's phone number. Why? I find that odd for a friend to have a dad's phone number. I don't have any of my friend's dad's phone numbers. And character three also phoned the landlord of the Nagshead pub to go check on Claudia. Why him? Why not herself? Why not ask Jen who lived over at Road? And more so, why not on the night Claudia failed to meet him, which is a few steps from her home to the pub? She also says an odd statement. This proves what a rubbish friend I am. 
Well, what was it that made you doubt your friendship before? This proved you are a rubbish friend. And as devil's advocate again, was it that you too had had one of Claudia's boyfriends? Or was it that you'd broke her trust, her secret? Character 4 Now this person had a close working relationship with Claudia and would often pick her up for work when Claudia didn't use her car. And on the day that she vanished, he said he thought, shall I pick her up as I drove to work? But for some reason, I decided to drive past the end of her street and take a different route. I would. And he said when he realised Claudia was missing, that it sat like a monkey on his back for a few days or weeks. Now, to me, it should be for life. And this person said on Paddy's night, which was the 17th of March, Claudia had been out celebrating till 4am with a new boyfriend. She'd filled him in about it at work that morning, whilst worst for wear. Yet character four, only remembered this a year later, then chose to tell the police. It appears to be a very consciously deliberate 12 month convenient omission. Character 5 Now this character was reported to police on the morning that Claudia vanished. This person is too very close to Claudia. But the milkman reported seeing this person as dishevelled, rough, agitated, coming home in the early hours on the morning that Claudia disappeared. When this milkman had only ever seen this character well presented and well composed. And this character deliberately didn't include a certain person in their future. So, Claudia was not included in the future of this close associate. Character 6 was also close to Claudia. In fact, Claudia used to babysit for this person years earlier. This person was also often seen in the press, footing news coverage around Claudia's disappearance. But this person also told the police that they'd not seen Claudia for over two weeks prior to her going missing. But they lied. In fact, they were at Claudia's house on the Thursday prior, which were four or five days they were in Claudia's house. So it just makes me wonder why they chose to lie. And this person would take pleasure in walking their Labrador dogs by the River Derwent. This person helped in keeping floodwaters from people's cottages and doors which reminded me of the culverts. And this person cherished their patio at the back of their house, which I'd imagine standing on and staring across the garden by about 10, 20 feet. All visions that I had in March 2009, why, I'm not so sure. But this person 
also displayed a picture of their wife in an ill-fitting wedding dress. And initially, they seemed to be like there were humour in that, but wholeheartedly, it was quite humiliating. And the wife's face looked like a crystal. It reminded me of a petrified stone. Nothing is covered up. That will not be revealed. There were four people that were close to Claudia who did not ring her mother Joan to inform her that Claudia was missing. Why was that I wonder? Also, a previous barmaid at the Nags Head pub said that it was quite normal for Claudia to stand Susie and Jen up at times. And whenever Claudia failed to show, Susie would just send her a text message. So the question here is, then why did both Jen King and Susie Cooper say that Claudia never let them down? Why did they say that as the evening went on they both began to panic? When 10 o'clock came around, they were both fearful. Why would that be? I would theorize, it is because they both knew that Claudia had something to fear. Both Jen King and Susie Cooper broke Claudia's trust by telling that same barmaid that Claudia was having an affair with Lee Horwell, who was married at the time. This later resulted in the breakup of his marriage. The Express newspaper pushed a story about Claudia. Several friends told the media that Claudia was involved with an ex-policeman at the time of her disappearance, though they did not know his rank or number. CCTV captured Claudia arriving home at 5 past 3 on the afternoon of the 18th of March, 2009. Who CCTV was this? Could it have been Jen King's? After all she lived opposite Claudia, on the other side of the street. What about after that, what else did the cameras pick up? Nine people have been arrested for the involvement or murder of Claudia Lawrence. Those people were later released without charge.